Donald Trump weighed in today on one of the most contentious issues facing voters in November, abortion. The former president faced pressure from social conservatives to back a federal nationwide ban on abortion. But in a video released earlier today, he took a different stance. Take a listen. My view is now that we have abortion where everybody wanted it from a legal standpoint, the states will determine by vote or legislation or perhaps both and whatever they decide must be the law of the land, in this case, the law of the state. Well, it's certainly not accurate to say that this is abortion is where everybody wants it from a legal standpoint, but certainly where uh, conservatives uh, wanted it, at least to begin. Let's discuss. Um, so, Kristen, uh, you cover Trump. There was mounting pressure on him from social conservatives uh, to, uh, to push a nationwide abortion ban. Um, he didn't say whether if something like that landed on his desk, he would sign it into law. He did say uh, that he was proud of the fact that the justices he appointed overturned Roe v. Wade. Was there actually anything new that he said today? No, and I will remind you that this is actually exactly where he started. I mean, publicly for the last two years, he has been saying it should be left up to the states. This is not an issue that he in any way wants to take on. And this was really him putting a button on it. This isn't going to change before the election unless something catastrophic happens. I'm told by advisors, like, this is the stance of the campaign and of Donald Trump. And the only reason that he came out and did this was because he was getting so much pressure from both sides to come up with a definitive stance. Now, he was getting this behind the scenes kind of pushback, as you said, from these evangelicals, from these social conservatives. And he was listening and he was publicly flirting with the idea of a 15 week national ban. But when you hear these moderate Republicans who were going to him, they were telling him this is a huge mistake politically. You cannot get out there and do any sort of national ban. So, yes, he did not mention it. But I am told by the campaign this was his way of putting his marker on where he's going to stand. And that's not going to change. Alice, um, his former vice president, Mike Pence, posted uh, on X on Twitter this response, quote, President Trump's retreat on the right to life is a slap in the face to the millions of pro-life Americans who voted for him in 2016 and 2020. And we saw a similar note of criticism from Republican Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina, who said, quote, I respectfully disagree with President Trump's statement that abortion is a state's rights issue. Dobbs, that's the uh, case in which Roe was overturned, Dobbs does not require that conclusion le legally. And the pro-life movement has always been about the well-being of the unborn child, not geography, meaning state by state. Uh, Trump took to Truth Social just moments ago to attack Lindsey Graham by saying, in part, Senator Lindsey Graham is doing a great disservice to the Republican Party and to our uh, country. Um, he, he basically is saying that that's a, a loser of an issue politically, so Republicans shouldn't be there. Well, do you think this is, any of this is going to have any impact on anti-abortion, pro-life voters? I don't think so. They are taking this as an opportunity to really express their frustration with this. You have groups like Susan B. Anthony who say keeping this in the hands of the state really cedes this to the democratic will on abortion, which they think is late term abortion. You have groups like Concerned Women for America who say that they uh, support Donald Trump's position, but they would like to see a uh, talk about a, a national limits on abortions, not uh, bans. But we have to recognize the fact we're past the Republican primary. He's the presumptive nominee. We're in a general election. And Donald Trump needs to appeal to independent, more moderate voters. And politically speaking, he's not going to do so if their threat hangs out there of a federal ban. And you can be pro-life, you can be anti-abortion, but we must recognize the political reality. If he did not uh, put a pin in this and explain exactly what his position is, Democrats would be hanging over his head about a federal ban, which Mind you, couldn't happen because neither side would get 60 votes for a federal ban. But it was important politically for Donald Trump to put his flag in the ground on this issue. Uh, how do Democrats see it? Because I don't think it's like that. I, I don't think so either. I think that Democrats think this is a losing issue for Republicans. I think that time and time again in the midterms and in these conservative states where ballot initiatives have lost, this is not a winning issue for Republicans. Democrats are going to take full advantage, not only from a fundraising point of view, but also in the ballot box in November. They're, this is an opportunity for them to reach out to those moderate voters, those Nikki Haley voters that are so important for uh, Joe Biden to win in November. And I will say, that's the one thing that Democrats and Donald Trump seem to agree with. This is not a winning issue for Republicans. Yeah. <laughs> Although I, I, I don't think he took it off the table for them in, in any case, because, I mean, obviously, their Democrats are still going to say he didn't say whether he would oh, sign absolutely. a ban. Uh, and he said that he's the one that's responsible for this. He, he began the video focusing on IVF, which is obviously an issue that has like 90% support, uh, and making it clear he supports families making their own choices when it comes to that type of uh, family planning. 
Um, so I, I guess he is trying to walk a line, but it, it really is just not where these swing voters are. No, it's not. And I think, again, Donald Trump knows that this is a losing issue. And if it was up to him, he probably wouldn't be talking about this at all. And part of the pressure was not just from these social conservatives, but it was also from Democrats getting out there saying he doesn't have a stance. Look at him waffling on all of this. So he had to put something down there, something on paper. But Obviously, it's Donald Trump, and he can't get out there without reminding everyone that he also is the architect. He's responsible for the overturning of Roe v. Wade. He's proud of what he did there. Again, despite the fact that he doesn't want to be talking about abortion at all, I will note on the IVF stuff, I mean, that is something that he felt like he handled really well, that he got out there right away, that he was saying he was supportive of IVF, that he, everyone he has talked to has said that to him. So that's probably why he led the video with that, then worked his way into the actual thing that we were all waiting to hear, which is where he stood on abortion. But, you know... It doesn't change much in terms of Democrats are still going to go after him. And now you have these social conservatives, the evangelicals going after him, too. It just gives him a little bit more definition in where he stands so that the idea of a looming national ban isn't hanging over him. And, and I think it was important to your point him to talk about supporting for IVF, which Republicans are pro-life and they support that issue. He also made point uh, to mention uh, he supports exceptions for rape, incest, and life of the mother, which is another important issue. But what he went out there today, to your point, he recognizes every time this issue is on the ballot uh, or an initiative, uh, the pro-abortion side wins, and he understands there needs to be a more nuanced position from the, uh, Republicans. You can still be pro-life, you can be anti-abortion, but in order to be more protective of the sanctity of life, we need to appeal to independent voters. So I saw some coverage that said that it, Donald Trump said this should be left up to the states. But if you actually listen to what he says, he doesn't say it should be left up to the states. He says it will be left up to the states, which is the current status. He still left the door open for some sort of ban. And I agree with you, there just never will be the votes right. in the Senate for that to happen. But he did not close the door on a ban. I, I just don't think he took the stance that everyone is trying to claim that he took. This is, I mean, he left it out there for everyone to interpret and he's like I don't understand why he even made a stance at all like why even go out there he didn't say anything new and so he just left more opportunity for Democrats to continue to harp on the issue and continue to drive a wedge in between the difference between Donald Trump and Joe Biden and where they stand on this issue and it's it's incredible that he continues to not understand that this is a losing issue so why did he I mean you acknowledge in the very first answer this is not new this has been his position for quite some time uh, which is basically, I'm really proud that I appointed the justices that overturned Roe v. Wade, uh, and now it's going up to the states, and that's where I am. Um, this is, why even do a, a video? Why even talk about this issue? Because as he acknowledges, as you say, as you know, he acknowledges this is a loser for him. When he came to, decided to do the video, a lot of it came off of the fact that he himself had begun floating this idea of a national abortion ban. 15 now, week, he, of a 15-week Yes, week of ban. a 15-week yeah. ban. Which, so again, this is a self-inflicted wound, right? He, the reason he had to come out and clarify that he once again was exactly where he started, which was that the right should go to the states, is because he himself had gotten out there and routinely said, well, maybe you know people agree on 15 weeks. Even the hardliners kind of like 15 weeks and floated this idea this over and true. over again, three, <laughs> like three separate times and three yeah. separate interviews that he might get behind this. So then it opened the door for Democrats to even hit harder again on an issue that they already have the upper hand on. Right. If you look at all the polling, and then he had to come out and say, actually, it's about the states' rights again. Yeah, curiouser and curiouser. Thanks, all, <laughs> for being here.